Can you make a speaker using mostly Lego? What about making a speaker almost entirely out of Lego? And if you can, perhaps a better question is, should you make a speaker out of Lego? In this video, we'll attempt to answer those questions. Ideally, we want to build something that not only works, but actually sounds reasonably good. After all, what's the point if you can't use it to host a banging house party? Let's start with a quick experiment. So, what exactly is a speaker? This is a neodymium magnet, and if we wrap 20 to 30 turns of wire around it, and then slide those loops onto a flexible membrane, which in my case is a piece of masking tape, you've essentially got a membrane that can vibrate when an electrical signal is sent through the wire. Give it a signal, and then move your magnet near the coil, and bam, we have sound. The loops of wire essentially amplify the electromagnetic signal in the wire, which then gets attracted to and repelled by the magnet, causing the membrane to oscillate at the frequencies traveling through it, which is why this tiny membrane is flapping around like a mad thing. Well, this thing is fine and all, but we need to go bigger. I'm gonna start with the main non-LEGO component of the speaker by cutting a section of toilet roll to fit my magnet. Then, I'll make a hole with a needle to feed the wire through to hold it in place. After winding around 30 loops of wire, I'll temporarily secure it with blue tack before coating it in glue for a more permanent hold. Then we'll need the membrane, which I've made using this paper plate. After tracing the curved gear rack onto it, it can be perfectly sandwiched between them later. Then we'll find the midpoint of the plate, and now we know where to mount the coil, which I've done using some super glue. Okay, that's the non-LEGO part out of the way. Now let's get to building. I'm going to make the speaker round, so these curved gear racks will work perfect. The paper membrane then should fit perfectly, sandwiched between these two gear rack rings. Then we'll secure the rings together using these lift arms, and we'll create a stable base. Then we'll mount the magnets, which for anyone interested are 25 by 20 millimeters, and they just happen to fit perfectly between these pieces without any movement at all. This is great. To hold the wires and stop them vibrating, I made this piece here. These rubber nipple things should help dampen the annoying buzzing that wires make when the membrane moves. Now we can mount the magnets in place, and secure the wires between the rubber nipples. Speaking of, I'll add some of those to the base plate too, to further dampen any vibrations. Then I secured the speaker to the base plate, and hopefully now when the membrane gets punched around, the overall assembly won't rattle too much. Okay, let's hook it up. I popped my Bluetooth module into this Technic case, and screwed the wires to the output, popped the roof on, and then added some extra support to keep everything secure. Alright, the moment of truth. Does this thing actually work? My Bluetooth amp here can take 24 volts and output up to 50 watts per speaker, which is very loud, and which we'll test in just a minute. But for now, I'm going to test it with a 9 volt battery to see how it sounds. I've picked this song currently playing called Ice and Fire by King Canyon, because it has reasonably thumpy bass, some lovely treble notes, and beautiful vocals. I've set up my mic beside the speaker, and now I'm transitioning over to the audio being output by the speaker. Wow, quality actually isn't bad. Though you can probably hear a bit of thwacking on each heavy bass note. And this is only at a third of the volume with a 9 volt battery. I'm not sure this bodes well for increasing the output. But I'm gonna do it anyway. 
Let's turn the volume all the way up with a 9 volt battery. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Well, in for a penny, in for a pound. Let's crank it up even more. I'm gonna hook up my power supply and feed it with 24 volts. And this time, I'm gonna pick a very bass heavy track to see if we can bring this thing to its knees. Just a quick warning, to give you an idea of just how loud this thing is, I didn't adjust the volume levels, so you might wanna turn your own volume down to a more neighbor friendly level. All right, here goes. <laughs> <laughs> That's just f***ing awful. No thanks. This is not a speaker I'll take out unless I want to clear out unwanted guests from my apartment. Okay, I have one last idea. What if we can find a way to make a membrane that doesn't have any direct contact with the Lego? And better yet, what if we could make almost the entire speaker out of Lego? Well, fortunately, I found that my magnets actually perfectly fit these Lego wheel hubs, and there's even a tiny hole in them to feed the wires through. Perfect. So I wrapped another coil inside the groove here, securing it with my trusty blue tack. And then the membrane itself are made out of these Lego plates. These plates are light enough to bounce around, and also thin enough to provide vibration at higher frequencies. I'll then build the support structure on this base plate to suspend the membrane. And this is also where the magnets will be mounted. And I'll add a little bit more support here. Then we'll need to mount the membrane. I've decided to use rubber bands here. If they're tight enough, they'll allow the membrane to bounce around, creating a strong base response and hopefully the plates are thin and light enough that they'll also have reasonable mids and treble. For now, I'm just really happy that I managed to build this thing almost entirely out of Lego. But let's not celebrate just yet. How does this thing actually sound? I'm going to try ice and fire again to see how the speaker manages with it. And once again, I'll try it using the 9 volt battery. Hey, now we're talking! This sounds genuinely good. It's not quite as loud as the paper membrane, and I did need to turn the volume up a little bit. And I suspect that's because the membrane is just much heavier. It requires more juice to get it to move. But cranking it all the way up doesn't seem to create distortion this time, and the bass actually sounds fantastic. No cracking or thwacking or rattling or anything. Though the mids are a little lacking, and the vocals could do with a bit of a bump. But in general, it sounds better than most cheap Bluetooth speakers. As a comparison, here's what they sound like one after another. Here's the paper membrane. And here's the Lego membrane. Okay, okay, how about a stress test using the heavy bass track that I put the paper membrane through? How will this one perform? Huh. Once again, this actually sounds pretty damn good. As a reminder, this is what the paper membrane sounded like. Big difference. 
No joke, this is a speaker I would actually use with some friends over, even if just for the wow factor. And unlike the other one, this one won't have folks making excuses to leave early. Well, that was an interesting experiment. It turns out that not only can you make a speaker out of Lego, you can actually make one that sounds genuinely good. It's not pretty, but I'm just delighted with this result. If you'd like to see more of these experiments with Lego, feel free to like and follow, and I'll see you in the next one.